in the eighth chapter of the book of Judges. I want to hang out tonight very quickly in that fourth verse that simply says, When Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over, exhausted, but still in pursuit. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and play preacher. Give him the sermon title. Tell him, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm exhausted, but I ain't done yet. It's a sad thing to be exhausted at the end and know that it's about to start all the time. Beloved, that, that, that's where Gideon shows up right here in this eighth chapter. You remember Gideon. We read about him in the book of Judges when the Midianites have taken over Israel. And in order to deliver Israel from the hand of the enemy, God decides to raise up a brother by the name of Gideon. Now you need to know God doesn't find Gideon in the sanctuary. Gideon's not in the temple. Gideon's not at prayer meeting. Gideon is not at New Year's Eve service. No, Gideon is thrashing wheat in the wine press. Now you're holy and sanctified, so you didn't catch it, so let me give it to you. Gideon is at the liquor store. Lord shows up at the liquor store and calls a brother and says, you're going to deliver my people from the hand of the Midianites. The Bible says that Gideon is exhausted. He's tired, but he's still in pursuit. That I'm exhausted, but, but I'm not finished yet. That there's still some things God wants from me as I cross over into this new season. Let me press upon you some things that God says to people who are tired at the end of a journey, but they ain't done yet. He says, number one, I need you to know that, that I need you to complete your past projects. Well, would, you, would you be a preacher for a minute just tell your neighbor, finish what you started? There's some stuff you thought you handled, but it has not been dealt with yet, and you cannot move forward until you go backwards and finish what you began way back then. But beloved, I, I want you to understand that there's some things God said you just got to deal with in order to move forward until you learn to deal with some stuff that's been lingering in your past that is affecting the possibility of peace in your future. God declared that there's some things you got to handle. Somebody, when you leave church, you got some business to handle. You got some conversations you need to have. You got some letters you need to write. You got some paperwork you need to file. You got some relationships you got to end. You got some loose ends to clean up. You got some apologies to offer. You, you got some work to do because there are things that were left over from last year that have to be dealt with before you deal with the new year. The Lord said, listen, you got to deal with some of your past stuff. Then the second thing the Lord says, not only do I want you to complete past projects, I want you to separate from problematic people. That's some good gospel right there. Because somebody, you came to church tonight for God to tell you, just let them go. C can I preach this thing? The Bible says that Gideon, while he's chasing Ziba and Zaluma, he goes to the town of Sokoth and Peniel and asks both of them for some bread. Can you help me out? And the Bible says that both of them refused and rejected. Everybody in Sukkoth and everybody in Peniel are Israelites. Gideon's own people. Folk that look like him. Folk that worship with him. Folk that serve the same God. And he recognizes that the people I thought would help me are the ones who rejected me when I need them most. Now, 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 now let me tell you why half the church is quiet. Because most people are paralyzed when they've been rejected. Somebody on your pew is dysfunctional if they're disliked. Someone you live with can't handle being turned down. And the minute folk reject and refuse, you can't operate. But what I like about Gideon is that when his own people turn him down, it doesn't stop him from doing what God called him to do. You wanna know why Gideon can function? even when he's been rejected? Because in chapter 7, when he showed up with 32,000 people, God taught him a valuable lesson. That you don't need all of them. 
to get this here thing done. You don't need Lottie Dottie and everybody standing by your side. All you need is the assurance that God is with you and you don't need anybody else. Someone, 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 I want you to understand that the biggest lesson God has been trying to teach you is that everybody you want, you don't need. That's some good gospel right there. That everybody you love is not ordained to be in your life. And some people are poisonous to your destiny. Let me pray. Would you know somebody ask him, have you learned your lesson? What I like about Gideon, when his own people turn him down, he doesn't beg them to change their mind. Because you got to reach a place in your walk with the Lord where you realize you ain't got to beg nobody to help you do nothing. If you don't want to help me, if you don't want to stand with me, if you don't want to support me, then baby, let them go. Can I teach Bible real quick? Let me tell you what Gideon does. When he recognizes that they won't help him, not only does he not beg him, watch what he does, he threatens them. That's cool. Y'all ain't gonna help me. But when I come back by here and the Lord has brought victory, you will recognize that I didn't need your bread. I didn't need your support. I didn't need your money. I didn't need your companionship because I've got a God who is able to make a way out of no way. I wish I had some independent sisters and brothers in this house who've learned the hard way that I don't need what you got because God is able to make a way in my life. Would you tell somebody, tell them the Lord to take care of me? Listen, listen, we, we, we got to get out of here. It says, it, says, it, says, it says, handle your past projects. Get away from problematic people. Then he says, and along your new journey, I want you to always reflect on my previous provisions. Because one thing you should never forget are the ways the Lord has made. One thing you should never forget are the doors God has opened, the prayers God has answered, the mountains God has moved, the healing God has brought, the provisions God has sent, the days God held you in the midnight hour, you should never forget how good God has been. Well, I, I, I'm done. 